Hey everyone, a couple months ago I showed you the whole process I went through to get an SVG outline of this model right here. Um, the intent for this project was to make a keepsake for a loved one who was uh, attempting to commemorate an engagement. My original intent was to make just a flat 2D sign with an image of this building engraven on it and it felt like maybe the easiest path to doing that accurately and carefully and, and giving me options for the composition was to create a 3D model and then be able to export the SVG out and then uh, plaster it on that flat 2D output. But as I got to doing that, um, I got a little frustrated, honestly, getting it to, to look right and work right in 2D. Just the composition wasn't working out well. And uh, then I had this crazy idea all at once I have this 3D asset right here. What if instead I actually made a 3D model of the building itself as the keepsake? And that is the path I ended up going down. Now you may have seen the short that I released uh, a few weeks after that that showed the final result. And this is going to walk through the process of how I got from point A to point B. So I started with this 3D model right here that I built. This is the one that I used for that previous video to get the SVG export. When I do architectural 3D models and renderings, I do them to scale because I find it easier to estimate the sizes. There are a few things you can look at that are sort of um, typically consistent, like stairs, for example. They're not, you know, there's not a perfect standard for those, but you know, roughly around eight inches is how I estimate the height of a stair. Also a standard door in at least United States residential architecture is about seven feet tall. And often in pictures, there are people standing around too that help you estimate sizes a little bit better. So I just find that easier to work with. So I model them to scale. And then if I need them at a different size, I'll shrink them down after. So this is the model I started with, but this doesn't translate well to a laser cut 3D um, output. So, um, you know, what I would look to do is have each face represented as a flat piece that I cut out of wood. And I was aiming to have all of these pieces slide together like a 3D puzzle. And the thicknesses of the walls here are not to scale with the, with the thickness of the wood I was going to use. So the first thing I did was strip out all of the dimension from this model. So I just had flat pieces to work with as I was planning my 3D model. So I went from this to something more like this, where all of the shapes were just, there's no dimension to them. I just have flat pieces that represent each wall. Um, you do see that I, in this version, I also started cutting out some of the shapes. So um, as you can see, what ended up being convenient for the 3D model is that um, roughly sort of correlating with where the roof line is here, there's this little um, trim along the outside, which actually provided great structure for pieces being able to slide into place since you do need wood on either side of of a uh, gap like that to slide a piece into. So um, that's what I began to do with these um, cutouts here. So I went to this flat shape like this. Now what I did here and how I would do it differently next time is instead of going from this to what I did was then build it in flatter shapes with cutouts inside like this. You can see I started to, uh, to make the cutouts in here. Um, what I should have done at that point was then shrink it down to the actual cutout size because this is still to actual real world scale, which is, I think if I recall, you know, well, we can check actually, why don't we look here? Why don't we look here? Um, you know, we're looking at, well, I did it in inches. So you know, 554 inches tall. I'm not gonna do that math right now. You can work it out on your own. I did it the hard way. I started building my tracks and pieces that got put together first and then shrank it down, which led to a lot of additional adjustment afterward. My objective was to fit all of the pieces onto one piece of um, laser sized material. What I would do is shrink down my flat version 
and you kind of have to start by taking a guess and then I would export those SVGs and try and arrange them on an 11 by 20 board and see if I came close and make adjustments from there. So once you get this down to the, the correct scale and the size you want, then I would take these pieces one by one and uh, I would thicken them. Um, now what you can do, and I think what I ended up doing was extrude the shapes and um, if you are also doing this in a very careful and accurate way, you would probably take calipers to the piece of wood that you are going to use. But in all honesty, I just kind of use a general rule of thumb of 0.123 inches for, and these are um, pieces of proof grade stock sold by Glowforge, um, which is a, a medium plywood product. Uh, and that works out to about 0.123 inches. And um, that generally works well for me. Um, occasionally, because of the variance in thickness in product, sometimes the joints will be a little tight, sometimes they'll be a little loose. But depending on the project, you might need more or less accuracy if you need them to fit more tightly to keep your model together. And I'm gonna go to this final laser shrunk version that I used. So these are to scale. Now this is to real world final 3D printed puzzle scale. We'll call it that. In the past, every project I've ever done before with my laser cutter, I have done um, using 2D vector design software. This project, however, was a little more complex because there are pieces that kind of slide into places in the middle. So the benefit of doing it in 3D allowed me to visualize um, in real 3D space, how the pieces would fit together. You will also see, you know, one of the one of the drawbacks of having snap together or slide together pieces is that they have to have an entry point. So in some cases, I did have to have parts where a little chunk was sort of missing so that this piece could slide in. Um, so it could slide in like this and and meet the point where it needed to. So I designed this so that all of the pieces slid together coming toward this corner here because the piece is going to be viewed from this angle. And I put some engravings here on the outside to kind of emphasize that that was the front and the focal point. So I took care to make sure that there were no notches on these what we'll call maybe the southwest corner. So those notches um, are a little less visible to the casual observer. Why don't I just take out, I'm just gonna move a few of these pieces away so that we can have a look here at the inside. So I do have a couple of pieces that um, required some some internal notches. So I have a couple of pieces. I didn't, I didn't want these notches to go all the way through to the end here because it would compromise the, the structural integrity of the 3D model. So I did um, create a couple of pieces that would slide partially out this way and then drop in vertically. So it drops into this hole vertically and then slide sideways like this. And again, one of the major benefits of doing this in 3D allowed me to really work out how all of these joints slide together. There did need to be a translation process from this 3D model to a 3D to a 2D shape since that's what the Glowforge accepts. It works with SVGs. So how do I get from this to an SVG shape? Well, I found this plugin called Outline to SVG. Um, it is not available in the built-in plugin space that you find up in preferences up here. Um, it is one that I downloaded from the free and open web, and I will post a link to that in the description. The trick with this plugin is that it exports your SVG from the projection of your view. So if you want flat and perfect shapes, you definitely need to make sure you are in the uh, orthographic views, um, either a front, a back, a left, or a right. So to export this shape, I would make sure I was in a front-facing view. And then I would just come up here and click Export SVG, make sure that I have got a folder that I want, and that is not the one I want. I'm gonna go in here 
um, and just save it as we're just going to do that click accept and then export oh the other trick is you have to have the shape selected that you want to export it and i did find success in doing multiple shapes at once also and i'll click export svg and then it doesn't really give you any feedback whatsoever if it was um, successful or not but we will just uh, pop over to finder the document is there buildingfront.svg i should have had my um, vector editing software open to begin with that is my one major complaint with affinity designer is that it takes much too long to open i am on a very speedy computer here and um, this should not be the case anywho uh, here we go here's our shape um, if you saw the last video you saw i struggled with a different uh, plugin that exported um, the, the the point distribution was a challenge with that one this makes very clean svgs which makes me very happy but it does put them at, to a very minuscule scale. So you will see here it's six pixels by seven and a half pixels. So this is the point where you will have to scale them up. Maybe I'll just make a new document here so we can kind of get a, uh, the uh, point here. I actually have a preset made for a Glowforge compatible artboard. And if I copy and paste this into here again you'll see it is super tiny so let's just scale it up now this is where having your 3d model is helpful because you can come back here and get actual um, inch by inch dimensions here so here i've got 3.31 by 4.11 so we can scale up um, to that size so I can just come down here make sure my dimensions are locked three point what was it uh, four point eleven is the one I remembered for the height and then uh, anyway it scales up just right and then I can take these files directly and print them anywho let's pretend that I just wanted another window here and uh, anyway I would just draw the shapes in 2d it's so much easier so much easier than trying to punch those shapes out in 3D. And then, you know, it cuts great on the Glowforge. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Um, from, uh, from 3D model to SVG export to Glowforge 3D puzzle. Uh, there you have it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and like.